My parents never taught me or led me in the direction of positive coping mechanisms. And unfortunately, that's led me down the road of a lot of self-destruction. And I was stuck for a long time. I didn't know where could I find these positive coping mechanisms. What even are they? What am I doing wrong? So I did a lot of research. And beyond my research, I've made a lot of mistakes. And I've self-sabotaged and hurt myself more ways than I wish was true. There are positive ways to deal with stress. There are reasonable and intelligent ways to go about a very stressful, negative, hurtful situation. In case you don't know what a coping mechanism is, coping strategies are the methods that people use in the face of stress and or trauma to help them manage painful or difficult times. You did not know, you were not told in your childhood how to cope with such a stressful and negative situation, so you kind of have to make it up on your own. And nobody's brain appears in this world with a full list of healthy coping mechanisms. People just kind of go as they will because it's all they know. So first and foremost, let me break down what negative coping mechanisms are or examples of them. So, some examples of maladaptive coping mechanisms are escapism. Escapism is pretty much exactly as it sounds. It could be withdrawing from friends, withdrawing from texting people back, kind of sitting in your room, not doing any, not responding to any of your responsibilities. These words come from personal experience. Escapism is a very good friend of mine. The reason I feel that I have chosen to be an escapist in the past is because Escaping is a way for you to feel like nothing else really exists. If I don't actively like participate in the world, then I'm not really a part of it. None of that trouble, none of the trauma really happened to me. It's kind of like being blindfolded with headphones on, pretending you don't really exist in this world. Unhealthy, self-soothing. So this could be binge eating, over drinking, excessive use of internet, excessive use of video games. Third one is numbing yourself. So when you're numbing yourself, you're aware of what you're doing but you also kind of don't care. You're aware that you're sabotaging your health by doing drugs, by drinking way too much alcohol, by being around people that you well know are not going to be good for your mental or physical health. And junk food has a huge part of this because if you didn't know, and I think everyone kind of technically knows, but a lot of junk food, a lot of sugary fat foods release dopamines. I'm not going to compare eating french fries with doing a line of cocaine, like we're talking entirely different things, but in essence, both release dopamine, compulsions, and risk taking. Stress usually causes a person to seek out adrenaline. Adrenaline rushes, dopamine rushes, jumping out of a parachute, doing drugs that you know are not very good for you, unsafe sex, theft, driving recklessly. All of those things are kind of examples of unhealthy coping mechanisms to deal with a stressor in your life. And believe me, I'm well aware in May 2020, but we're not even going through it. We're like, we've been through it, sweetie. So something that I read online maybe a month ago that seriously struck my interest and I really want to regurgitate this information to all of you is pay attention if you are exceeding your cognitive bandwidth. Because exceeding your cognitive bandwidth is a form of self-harm. In this day and age of the 2020s, early 2020s, I don't know, let's pray that it is the early 2020s and not the late ones, but a lot of us were told that we have to be super productive. This is your time. This is your time. You have to be productive. You finally have the time to finish that project you've always wanted to do. And so people like myself in our journal will jot down 50 things to do in one day. Let's be realistic. That's not going to happen. You're not going to accomplish 50 things, 50 tasks in one day. It's just unrealistic. It is exceeding your cognitive bandwidth and that is hurting your brain. It's not helping you in any way. You're not being more productive by putting 50,000 things that you damn well know you will not accomplish on your to-do list. Like shit, I'm sorry, I would rather put like four things down that I damn well know I can do than 50 things to feel like I'm a boss lady and I can like do all this and this and this. Like, I won't, and I damn well know I won't. So in essence, you're putting the stress on yourself. There was initially no stress to do that thing, but you're putting yourself in a position where you're putting stress on yourself 
that is a form of self-harm. Don't fill your schedule up with more things than you know genuinely you can do. So furthermore, a very life-changing thing that I've learned in my life is that you have to accept the things in life that you have zero control over. There are some things that you can change, but there are some things in this world that you literally cannot. So you may as well just let it go, like let it be, because what is the point? It's like if you're gonna stress about it, well there's two options. Like yeah, I'm gonna stress about it, I'm gonna do something about it, oh wait, I can't do anything about it, I'm gonna stress about it, I'm not gonna do anything, well I'm still stressed about it, so why the frick are you stressed about it if you can't change it? Now it makes no sense to me, but before it was like... Shit, like something, I, I must change it, I must change this. I know I have the power within me to change the situation. But realistically, there are certain things in life that you cannot change. And that's fine, because this is life and it's not all about you. So just surrender to it, let it be, make peace with the situation, breathe, and let it go. And then, Make the choices of what you can do, what is in your power to make your life better. Very, very important. Limit the amount of time that you spend on social media and the news. More importantly, the news. When this whole thing was going down, I was watching the news manically. And at a certain point, I had convinced myself that I was infected with COVID-19 because not only did I travel three days ago, but I literally could not breathe at night. I couldn't get a single deep breath in at night. And it turns out that I didn't have COVID-19. I was just incredibly fucking anxious. And that was due to the fact that I was sitting there refreshing my page, looking at news to see what's going on in the world. They're gonna report on the most negative, toxic shit so that it can absolutely intoxicate your brain with negativity and fear. And that is how society brainwashes people. So stop listening to the news. There's absolutely, even at the, especially at this point, like no reason to continue watching the news because the news is brainwashing you into being a fearful human being. And I doubt anybody watching this wants to be that. Another major thing that has greatly helped me in terms of building positive coping mechanisms is feeling myself and my body every single day going on a run, going on a walk, going to the gym, if you like to go to the gym. That could mean doing aerobics. That could mean literally lifting up your leg. That could mean doing arts and crafts. Using your arms, using your legs. Feel yourself in your body. Without the distractions of the outer world, just every single day, make sure to take the time out to remember that, like, hey, this is my soul and this is my body and we are one right now. Which does bring me to another very important point. Please try not to make this about you. Whatever situation you're going through, try to not make it about you. Look at the other side of the situation. Look at 10 sides of the situation. Please just don't make it about you because I'm sorry the world does not revolve around you. It doesn't revolve around me doesn't revolve around YouTube, it doesn't revolve around anyone. Just try to put things into perspective. Try. Something that I didn't find when I researched, but I kind of came to terms with myself is try to remember what made you feel fulfilled at the end of the day. So two years back, when I came home at the end of the day, after a work day, what was that work day like that made me feel so fulfilled and happy? What did I do? If I took pictures of somebody, if I did video editing, if I did photo editing, if I did something creative at the end of the day, I could fall asleep like a baby and feel like my life's purpose is being fulfilled every single day. And that's kind of just something I want people to remember. It's like everyone is saying, please like keep waking up at the same time that you were previously waking up and keep doing the things that you were previously doing and just pretend like everything is normal, but beyond pretending that everything is normal, can we just focus on making ourselves feel fulfilled? What made you, at the end of any day, if you can remember in your mind a single day in your life where you came home and at the end of the night you were like, wow, I am happy. What did you do that day? 
And whatever you did, keep doing it. Another point that I came across was mindfulness activities. And I know that this sounds incredibly cliche, because you've heard it everywhere, but no one really takes the time to explain how the hell you even do it. Everyone on Instagram is like, I meditated today, and I'm like, okay, great, but like, how? So I'm going to be sharing the mindfulness activities that I do, genuinely, on an everyday basis, because they help me survive. The first one is deep belly breathing. I have a very, very, very strong fear of insomnia. So if I'm in my bed and I can't fall asleep and it's 3 a.m., 4 a.m., 5 a.m., I see the sun rising, that's it. My anxiety is through the roof, like up into the sky. That's why I often feel like I have to sedate myself because God forbid, like if I don't fall asleep that night, like my entire next day is ruined and my entire schedule is off track. Um, but something that has immensely helped me, more than medication, more than anything in this world, deep breathing is the only thing that's actually helped me fall asleep every single night. And to demonstrate what that actually looks like, laying on a bed, you take a deep breath in your nose, hold for as long as you can, and then you breathe out with your mouth. And basically what that does is that tricks your nervous system, your heart, your pulse into slowing down so you're not as ramped up because I'm the kind of person just like many of you have, that lies there in the bed and is like stop thinking stop thinking stop thinking okay let's think about one two three four one two three four one two three four oh wait what my cat to yesterday oh wait shit fuck one two three four one two three and it goes on until like 5 a.m. yeah guided meditation I will leave links below to guided meditations on YouTube that are absolutely free you can bookmark them on your phone and listen to them every night and just give it a try just don't knock something down until you've tried it like they say yoga and stretching and relaxing your muscles although I know it's incredibly cliche and it's like geez wow thanks Einstein you're opening up a huge like new discovery for us with this video but I shit you not it actually works my absolute favorite one is mindfulness walking I've been doing this approximately for four years. Every single night I go on a 20 to one and a half hour walk. I'm either in headphones listening to music or discovering new music, going on my SoundCloud or Spotify, finding out what artists release new music, or I am simply in headphones with no music on just so people don't like. I will just go on a walk and I'll set a destination. For example, I used to live in Venice Beach and I used to say that I'm going to walk to the grocery store to get my dinner. So it was a 30 minute walk there and a 30 minute walk back. By the time I was done, it was an hour workout. Mind you, I was walking fast. I was breathing fresh air. I was in nature. I was listening to music. My endorphins were running because of the exercise and the music. But I think that the mindfulness evening walk is such an amazing opportunity to be with yourself. To kind of check in with yourself and figure out what's working, what's not, what am I feeling right now? What needs to be changed? What feels uncomfortable? What feels like it doesn't belong? This is not something I looked up on the internet. This is sincerely coming from my heart. Um, walking outside every single night from 30 minutes to an hour just by myself, not listening to anybody or talking to anybody or having any outside influence has impacted my life in such a positive manner. 